Okay, here we're continuing on in our discussion of topic 958, not for profit entities. Um, and we've been going through um, subtopic 20, financially interrelated entities. And in the first two videos, we talked about what types of uh, transactions or entities are considered uh, financially interrelated entities. And so they fall within the subtopic and that's in scope and scope exceptions section. Um, but now we're in the recognition section to learn how we need to recognize uh, transactions between financially interrelated entities. And in the last video, we talked about how to recognize contributions that the recipient entity receives uh, that are intended for the beneficiary. But now we'll talk about um, the beneficiary's recognition of its interest in a financially interrelated recipient entity. So um, as was the case in the previous video, the recipient entity will receive a donation from say a corporation or another donor. And uh, then it's required to send that donation of assets or, or um, cash um, or promise to, to give. Uh, there's required to send those to a beneficiary and that might make them be financially interrelated entities and in that case if a beneficiary and a recipient entity are financially interrelated entities that's uh, defined in the scope section in a prior video then this beneficiary should recognize its interest in the net assets of the recipient entity and we've got some examples here and these are the same examples we looked at in the last video um, but they explain that recognizing the interest in the net assets of the recipient entity uh, is just adjusting that interest for a share of the change in that assets of the recipient entity um, that's similar to the equity method. Uh, uh, equity method is um, outside the scope of this video, but it's in section 323.10, uh, or rather that subtopic. Uh, but basically you um, increase your, uh, or the beneficiary would increase his net assets um, for the amount of the change in net assets at the um, recipient entity that are owed to him. And then uh, when he actually, when the beneficiary actually receives those assets from the recipient entity, then it reduces this net interest, um, just like the equity method. So let's take a look at some of the um, illustrations here provided by the FASB, and this will give us a better idea of how we're supposed to record uh, this transaction. So if we remember example one, uh, the corporation sends dental supplies to a foundation who then sends those dental supplies to a dental clinic at the university. So uh, they're financially integrated entities and whenever the um, foundation receives those dental supplies that are intended for the dental clinic, it records a revenue um, and uh, increase the net assets uh, in the amount of the fair value of the dental supplies that it receives. And so, um, since these dental supplies are intended for the beneficiary, um, then the university, uh, which is the dental clinic, um, has an ongoing economic interest in the net assets of the foundation uh, because it gets those net assets. Therefore, the university, which is the beneficiary, uh, it recognizes a change in its net, uh, net interest in the net assets of the foundation, uh, which include that gift of non-financial assets received by the foundation. So uh, whenever at the financial reporting date, the dental clinic at the university uh, increases its net assets and according to the interest and the dental supplies that are owed to it from the foundation. And so later on, when the dental supplies are sent down to the university's dental clinic, then the university would recognize assets received and decrease its interest in the net assets of the university's foundation. And on the other side, uh, when the university foundation distributes the dental supplies to the dental clinic, and then it reduces its assets um, and recognizes an expense and an expiration of the restriction that it had uh, because the, it was restricted to sending those dental supplies down to the university's dental clinic. Okay, in our second example, um, if you remember in the prior video, we had a corporation that transfers cash to a healthcare foundation. And the healthcare foundation is supposed to use the gift to provide healthcare benefits to the community. And there are three different beneficiaries that could be sent. Uh, those cash transfers, and that could be the hospital, nursing home, or the walk-in clinic. So the corporation didn't specify a specific one, so we know that it's not going to be uh, restricted. And we see that here, net assets without donor restrictions, uh, because it didn't specify the beneficiary. However, we do know that when the foundation receives those assets from the corporation, it's going to record uh, the cash that it receives, as well as a revenue at that time. But what's different about this one compared to the first example is that um, the donor didn't specify which particular um, hospital, nursing home, or walk-in clinic, which one of these um, they want the cash to be transferred to. And for that reason, each of these, the beneficiaries, aren't able to claim the net assets of the foundation. So they're not able to record um, and increase their net assets um, for the contributions received from the corporation because they're not restricted specifically to them. Uh, the foundation can decide to whom and in what amounts to distribute to. So uh, each of these beneficiaries can't record an, an interest in the net assets of the foundation. However, if there had been an agreement in place um, that said how much of the foundation's net assets were owed to each of the beneficiaries, whether the hospital, nursing home, or walk-in clinic, um, then each of these beneficiaries could record their um, share of the net assets of the foundation that uh, are owed to them as an increase to their net assets. 
So for instance, if they have some kind of agreement where the hospital, nursing home, and walk-in clinic each get a third of each donation that uh, the foundation receives, then each of them would record, uh, much like the equity method, an interest in the uh, net assets of the foundation. And also, as another example, if the corporation had specified that this gift be used for the walk-in clinic, uh, rather than just giving without a restriction, as it did in our example, um, then the foundation would recognize the revenue that increases the net assets with donor restrictions um, because it specified that the cash that it received and donated to the foundation goes to the walk-in clinic. And so in that case, uh, case the walk-in clinic would include in its net assets, or it would include the net assets of the foundation uh, resulting from that gift from the corporation. So much like the equity method, it would have an asset called something like interest in the net assets of the foundation, and it would, it would adjust those assets, that asset up um, as the foundation receives assets that are uh, restricted to the walk-in clinic. Uh, as our final example, we have um, an individual that transfers cash to an arts foundation, and the individual said um, that the money is supposed to be used to support the ballet. And if we remember, the arts foundation has both a community ballet and a community theater. So we see that the transfer uh, to the foundation was intended to the ballet as a beneficiary, so it's restricted, um, and it was recorded as a revenue at the foundation and increased to uh, net assets with donor restrictions. And so when it finally distributes its assets, assets to the community ballet, uh, it reduces um, its assets and recognizes an expense. Um, so let's see how it's supposed to record the net, or how the ballet is supposed to record its net interest and the net assets of um, the foundation. And so um, at each period end, or whenever it needs to prepare financials, it will, the ballet will record um, its interest in the net assets of the foundation. And so that means it would include in the, um, the net assets the gift that uh, the foundation received from the individual. Since that individual had, had limited that cash transfer to being for the community yeah. ballet. And so then when it re actually receives those assets um, from the foundation, then the community ballet will um, recognize and increase the assets that it receives. So it'll maybe debit cash um, as it receives that cash and it will de decrease its interest in the net assets of the arts foundation. So it'll credit that asset account that it, it recorded earlier, much like an equity method of receiving a dividend or a di distribution. So in summary, if the um, recipient entity receives um, assets as a donation that are intended for a beneficiary, uh, then that beneficiary needs to record uh, an asset uh, that's the interest and in the net assets of that recipient entity for the amount of cash or other assets that it's supposed to receive or that's owed to it. And when it actually does receive those assets or cash uh, at a later point from the foundation, then the beneficiary can reduce its that the value of that asset account that's uh, the interest in the net assets of the recipient entity and record those assets that it receives on its balance sheet.